This is season three of The Sweater with Kathleen Dames. I'm your host, Kathleen Dames, and over the course of our 12-week season, we will knit basic cable together. An awesome worsted weight cabled pullover. Hello, my friends, and welcome to season three, episode six of The Sweater with Kathleen Dames. I am so excited. Today is an episode that I know a lot of you have been waiting for. I'm going to talk to you all about how to do cabling, especially how to cable without a cable needle. If you learned how to cable with a cable needle or a spare DPN, learning to do it without any extra equipment is going to be life altering. It really, you never have to worry about losing that cable needle again. Um, I think I've only come up with one or two cables I've encountered, complicated cable stitches that actually required a cable needle. Otherwise, you can definitely do it. It doesn't matter the movement, you can do it without a cable needle. So I'll show you how. The thing to know about cabling with or without a cable needle is what you're doing when you are making a cable is you are changing the position of the stitches. And I do this a lot when I'm talking about cables, how the fabric comes in and how the twi stitches twist around. And that's exactly what happens. You're taking, okay, let's say we've got four stitches here and four stitches here. That would be a really big cable cross. And you're working across and you've got, you come to these eight stitches. And what you wanna do is either bring four of them to the front, well, to the front, I'm looking at my work, to the front or the back and then work these stitches and then either these four in the back or these four in the front. So you have to get to that second set of stitches, however many it is, before you do these. And of course, then you have the front or the back issue. So the thing with a cable needle is generally you just slide those first stitches onto a spare needle and you flop it to the front or the back, depending on which way you're supposed to cross them. And then you work those next stitches and then you work the held stitches and that way they've crossed over and that makes a bunch and that's what pulls the fabric in so that's what's happening either this way or this way and we're doing four here so if you don't have a spare dpn or a special cable needle there are a couple different things you can do some people are really daring and it really depends on the kind of yarn you're working with but you could just slip those stitches off the needle and let them hang out and then catch them up before they start sliding down and uh, work those stitches out of order. But if you are, um, if you want a cable without a cable needle and you don't want to worry about dropping any stitches down, having them get loose or anything, the thing to do is to slide those first stitches that you need to, that need to hang out to your needle, to your right needle, then work the next stitches, and then you've got these stitches that haven't worked hanging out, they're bunched in there. And what you do is you take your needle to the front or the back, depending on which way you need to cross them, grab those stitches, you're gonna slip your just worked stitches off the needle briefly, and then slide the working needle out and catch them. So that um, there's just a moment, just a brief moment where those newly made second bunch of stitches are hanging free in the air. But it's just for a second, and I like to sort of pinch them with my finger. You'll see when we get to the close-up. Um, and then you work those second set of stitches and they've been swapped. Um, like I said, there was only one move that I found that I couldn't work uh, without a cable needle, and it's a complicated open work um, cable in the Marianne cardigan where your outer stitches are framing this lace section. And for that, it really you really did need a spare something because the stitches get worked very far apart from each other. But otherwise, you're just crossing here, crossing front and back. It doesn't matter whether you're knitting or purling the stitches. Some cables, not the ones we're working here, but some of them you uh, you knit some of the stitches and purl some of the stitches and that of course brings that cable into relief from the background. But it really doesn't matter, you just have to be aware of where your working yarn needs to be in that case. So let's say you have to do a cross where you're gonna um, knit the stitches that you're bringing in front and you're gonna purl the stitches that are going in the back and they're moving to the second position, we'll say. So you slide those second position stitches onto the needle, make sure your working yarn's at the back, work your next stitches for the, for the cable itself, the knit stitches, then you need to make sure 
before you swap the position of those stitches to bring the yarn in front. You want to make sure the yarn is ready. So, and then you just purl those stitches that were waiting after you've swapped their position with the needles. And then you're good to go. Really, it doesn't matter whether it's knit or purl. You just need to be aware of which stitches need to be in order at the end of that section. We'll say at the end of the row, okay? If you are going from purl three, knit two, and you're gonna swap those, then you need to make sure that your yarn is always in position and so that you end up at the end that you have knit two, purl three, right? So at the end of the row, everything matches your uh, cable chart or written directions. Of course, the cables that we're working on in basic cable and that I'm working on in premium cable are uh, sort of your regular crosses where you're crossing knit over knit. And so that makes it a little easier. Uh, you don't have to worry about manipulating, moving where the yarn is supposed to be between the needles, the working yarn. So that's the gist of working the cable and I'm gonna show that to you now. And I'm also gonna show you a little bonus feature, uh, kind of on purpose, but I did it on the first sleeve, so I'm repeating it on the second sleeve. I miscrossed a cable at one point. It's kind of funny because it's the same twist every time and usually I'm on autopilot and I set it up to be the kind of twist that I am more comfortable working, um, you know, which way I'm putting the needle in from the front or the back. So this is very much a me cable and yet somehow uh, on the previous sleeve I noticed quite a bit afterwards that I had miscrossed the cable, that instead of crossing it to the front, I crossed from the, to the back. And so I have a little error here and I'm gonna show you how to fix a cable when you discover an error. And for that, you're going to want spare DPNs in the same size as your working needle. And we're going to, da -da -da -da, we're gonna drop the stitches down uncross the cable, recross it, and work everything back up. And uh, there are a few little extra bits that you'll want to know when doing that. And uh, so then I'll actually get to show you how to cross the cable a couple of times. So hopefully that will make it clear. Um, I also had some other questions from people about cabling and about sometimes that last stitch on your cable, the last knit stitch before the purl is loose, particularly in a cable. You may also find that it's looser in your ribbing and that part of it is just the way you're knitting. And um, there are a few things you can do about that. Uh, sort of the most low tech would be to simply be really conscious where you're going between the knit and the purl. And as you do that purl stitch, just tug a little tighter uh, on the working yarn and to make that stitch a little smaller than your regular stitch movement. Uh, so that's one way to do it. Another way, I found this works best in working back and forth rather than working in the round. Uh, it's when you go to purl the stitch after your cable to purl through the back loop and that is a almost microscopically shorter distance the yarn has to go between the knit stitch and the purl stitch. And because you've used less yarn, it tightens it up. And then on the way back on the, um, on the wrong side row, you can um, work into the back of the stitch to straighten it out. And, but I found that that doesn't work as well for me. I can't get it to work the same way when I'm working in the round. So I really have just worked on consciously making sure I'm not loose and lazy on that last uh, stitch before a purl stitch. And that seems to really make the difference for me. Also bear in mind that if it's only a little loose, relax, let blocking help you out here. Um, I think everything is really smooth and even on basic cable. And uh, so I didn't, and I didn't work too hard. I worked, I was a little conscious of making sure this last stitch before the purl fabric was, was snug. Um, but I didn't try to change my knitting too much. I think um, some of it is just getting more and more versed in your knitting, more comfortable, creating more stitches. The more you knit, the more even your knitting becomes. I'm sure you've noticed that even if you're a newer knitter, you already have found that from your very first wonky uh, learn to knit project, you have come a long way since then. So the, um, you know, of course, the more even your stitches are in general, I think the better your cables are. Uh, also something to bear in mind, whether you are working sleeves, um, 
with two circular needles or DPNs or like I'm doing, I'm using Magic Loop, try not to have the, um, the split you know, the change of needle be right at the end, right at that point of changing between knit and purl. And it really is more between knit and purl stitch for most people than it is between purl and knit. But if you are aware of that, where that join is with your needles, um, if you can scooch it over a few stitches one way or the other, you will find less, um, less of a gap you know, less of those sort of gappy, larger stitches because, oops, hold on. <laughs> you will find less of a gap because, um, because you're not also working on changing needles. And that tends to, uh, when we're doing that, we tend to have a little bit more yarn get into the stitch because we're worried about manipulating to the next needle. Um, and so, you know, you can pull a little on that too. And that's something that of course you can do at any time you're changing needles. I found that especially true with DPNs. The first stitch or two on the new DPN, make sure you're making that snug and that will um, tend to eliminate those kind of ladders that are quite common, especially when you're new to DPNs. So as I said, I'm working my sleeve in um, a magic loop style and I find that easier. It's easier to shift, uh, the change point, you know, I can shift every round and that also helps eliminate ladders because if you're shifting where you're changing the needles um, every round, then, then there's no chance of getting a ladder. And as I've said before, you know, yarn wants to relax and achieve a state of equilibrium. So if you've got those little gaps, those little slightly larger stitches all around, especially when you block and you let it relax and settle in, it has its bath, um, then you will find that everything will sort of even out and, uh, and look perfectly smooth and lovely. So as you can see, I promised you an error and there it is. Here are the way, here's the way that the cables have been crossing. And as you can see, this one is going the wrong way for this cable pattern. Of course, there are other cable patterns where you would want this waving back and forth. But today, I'm going to show you first how to fix this. Oh, we're gonna drop stitches off. There we go. Okay, and I've got some DPNs here and I'm gonna show you how we can fix this. So here's the thing, you have to pull these back. I have pulled the needle out of these stitches and in fact I'm gonna move okay so now the rest of these stitches are secure okay and I'm going to tink sort of I'm just gonna pull these stitches out until we get to the crossing round and I happen to know that crossing rounds in this case always happen on a scrimshaw row round I should say so now you see my stitches are back the way they're supposed to be and what I'm gonna do is pick up the stitches oh, without splitting them. All right, and I'm gonna pick them all up here just to be sure. And one thing you can notice right away is that this third stitch is a little bigger. And that's because when we are doing that crossing, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, maybe I'll do it on two separate needles. That might make it easier. Your aim is to keep all those threads to the back for the subsequent rows. All right. Okay, so there we go. We've got everything. Right now they're on two DPNs and I am going to shift them to one because we're gonna use the other DPN to do the knitting. All right, so there we go. Now I am ready to cross the stitches the right way. And so I slip the first three. This is a three over three cross. And this is just as if I were doing it with regular needles, okay? Now the challenge, of course, is that I need to use just these little threads from the back. Okay, so here you can see this is, can, can you, this is the lowest uh, thread of yarn 
and we're doing a continuation and I'm going to start by knitting the second three. So I've slipped the first three stitches to my working needle and now I'm just going to work these second three. And what you want to make sure you're doing if you are fixing the cross is to keep the tension on on your working yarn. You should still have a lot of yarn here and this is going to work for three stitches. Okay, so now I need to cross these in the front. So I dig the needle into, can you see that? I dig the needle into these three and this is convenient that I'm doing stripes. This makes it even clearer. So I need to cross my white stitches, my au naturel stitches in front of my scrimshaw stitches because this is a front cross. Okay. Here's the scary part, and it's really not scary. All right, slide it out of all the stitches. Now go back, grab those three, see how they're on the back and they're crossing over. And now I'm going to knit, and I still have my yarn here. This is when it helps to know how to work um, continental. Okay, and now I'm going to work my next three. All right, and the last one, last stitch is always a little wonky. Okay, and there we go. Now we're crossed properly. Yay! See how they go in the front? Now, the one thing is, there's a little extra yarn here. So what I like to do at the end of these stitches is to slide them back and sort of even out the tension on those stitches. Okay. I also can make sure, yes, that they're all facing the right way because that one was not and neither was that one. Okay. So it helps to make sure that the stitches have an even tension across. And now we're just going to pick up the rest of the stitches here. And by which I mean the rest of the rows. Okay, so the rest of these rows are just your basic knitting. So we don't have to worry too much. We're not crossing anything else. Okay. And you can yeah, so you have to be careful that your subsequent threads are out of the way. Okay, that's, that's something to be aware of. And you check your tension and you can see it's not quite even. Some people like to go back and forth to turn the work and then purl back. Um, but I like to slip all, for, I like to do it, slip these for each round and help even out the tension a bit because that will make it invisible when we are all done with the error. I should say with the repair, right? Okay, let me get my finger in there. And now we'll do the next row. And really at this point it is a row, but we're just working them all from the right side. It's like a giant I cord. All right. And there you can see that this stitch is a little loose here, right? There we go, you can see that's too loose. So what I like to do is sort of tighten that up. Tighten and make the next stitch bigger. We want to move the excess along. Okay, and now here we are on our last one. And just look at how much yarn we have here for six stitches. I'm just always kind of fascinated with that. It just goes to show you how much yarn actually goes into a stitch. Sometimes it seems like a lot and sometimes it seems kind of like a little, but look at this, look at this big gap I have here. That's because I started off and it made it really tight at this end. So again, all right, and this time I'm gonna put everything back onto the needle because I'm going to again show you how to really cable without a cable needle 
as you're working along. Okay. Two, three, five, six. Okay. And I'm going to put my DPN down because we don't need it. <laughs> All right. And here we are ready to knit with the scrimshaw. And this is a three over three cross. So I'm going to slip three stitches to my working needle. Get ready to work the next three stitches. One, two, three. And now I'm going to put my left needle into the front of these three stitches. If I were going to be crossing these stitches to the back, I would do them through the back loops here. But I'm doing a front cross. And so here we go. And what I want you to be aware of is I'm sort of pinching these stitches as I'm sliding things out. Make sure you have room to manipulate. And take the needle out of the whole shebang. And now you can see those three. And I'm going to put my needle. <laughs> oh, it's getting a little stretched out. It's hard to do it here on camera like this, but I can do it. And the thing to do is to be sure not to pull your working yarn while you're getting these stitches back on your needle. So there we go. One, two, three. And now I am all set to work the next three. and to finish my cable. Okay, so there you go. Crossed properly and all ready to move on. And what I like to do now, as we switch to the purl, I have found that I cannot do the, um, the purling through the back loop. It just doesn't work for me when I'm working in the round. I have had success working it flat. Um, but when I'm making this purl stitch, what I want to do is be sure to make it snug. Okay. And there we have it. And I'd never find a problem going from purl to knit. Okay. So, but there you can see, there's our beautiful cable. And if I'm not happy with say that stitch, I can go back with, um, with a crochet hook a little later and even up the tension. So, that is how you cable without a cable needle. And of course, with a cable needle, you would just have slipped those stitches on the cable needle and held it to the front in this case, or if it was a back cross, to the back, work the next stitches, and then go and work from the cable needle. And that's why it helps to have a cable needle that is about the same size as what you're working on, uh, or a little smaller, because you don't want to distort the stitches, but you are going to be knitting right off of them. Bearing in mind that it's the working needle that is the needle size that determines your stitch size, right? That's the one you're making your loops around, so that's the one that really matters. So uh, that is, I think, everything you need to know about cabling without a cable needle. And also, of course, I'm gonna, I've shown you a little bit of the basics of how to cable with a cable needle. A cable needle is really just sort of uh, specialized DPN. So. If you feel that you don't want to do the cabling without a cable needle, understandable. It's knitter's choice. You are the boss of your knitting. Um, in that case, you know you don't need to get a special cable needle. I tend to use a DPN of the same size or smaller. Don't go with the larger DPN because that will tend to distort the stitches a little. We just you know, we're working on eliminating distortion um, in as much as we can because, of course, cabling actually distorts the stitches, right? We cross it over, we make this tighter spot there, uh, it makes this wave. We're doing it on purpose, but you don't want to stretch those stitches out even more. It will look a little wonky. Um, so same size DPN or smaller. Uh, it's great because you can just slide the stitches on there and you don't you have both ends and usually a cable needle it has a little dip or it can be barbell shaped those were my favorite when i was still using a cable needle so the the center was just a little bit narrower and then your stitches stayed more safely in that middle spot so um, and some people also use it looks like a giant fish hook that's certainly another option and the 
stitches tend to stay in the u-shaped part of the hook and it just hangs to the front or the back but like i said i now am a full-on cabling without a cable needle convert i find it goes a lot faster i'm not constantly looking for my dpn or my cable needle i'm not losing it and um, and i feel like a more confident knitter now that i know how to do that it helps you feel more com comfortable if like you drop a stitch and you have to pick it up because you've gotten used to taking stitches off the needle and getting them back on and that's a really good skill to have so even if you are like you know what cabling of that cable needle is, isn't for me do give it a try just to see and think about it and maybe not on this project maybe down the line but i think it's one of those great skills that makes it all go so much faster um so I also want to say thank you so much to everyone who tuned in to the live show last week. To those of you who wrote in in advance with your questions, oh, it was great. I had lots of good questions and I hope I gave good answers that were helpful to you. Um, what else was I going to say about it? I was going to say I had so much fun. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got a lot out of it. And uh, maybe after this season is over, we can do a few more live shows, just sort of general knitting questions. They could be about any of my sweaters or other designs. So, so let's talk about that uh, for maybe sometime in January. You know, after the new year, we'll be ready to think about different projects. I know most people are getting into their uh, holiday knitting now, if you're watching this sort of as we go along. Um, and in fact, if you are if you just celebrated American Thanksgiving, I hope you had a lovely one. And um, I hope you are knitting today and all weekend long. And I will be back next week. We'll be talking more about the body. If you have any questions about knitting the body or knitting the sleeves, uh, now is the time to ask. The forums are a great place. You can always hit reply on an email from me from the newsletter. Uh, Twitter is great too. We had a technical difficulty last week, which was really more just a <laughs> Kathleen difficulty of my not being able to see the comments um, during the live show for a while. We got it figured out, um, but in the interim, people tweeted questions to me, and so we were able to sort of come up with that workaround. So Twitter's great too if your question will fit into 140 characters. So. Questions about the body and the sleeves, that would be for next week. That'll be episode seven. And then we're gonna get on to the other episode where people have a lot of questions. We're gonna be talking about the split and the join. So the split is the round where we're going to uh, stop knitting and set our stitches aside for the underarms. And then the join is where we bring it all together to get ready for the yoke. And that seems like, especially for new sweater knitters, that seems like a really confusing spot. So I hope I can demystify it for you. That'll be in two weeks. But if you have questions now, you can ask them. I generally answer them, answer your questions, and then make note of the questions and answer them again on the podcast. So if you have a question, you don't have to worry that if you ask it now, you're gonna have to wait two weeks to see it. Ask now, I'll write you back, we'll become even better friends, and then I'll have uh, more specific things to talk about in the podcast. So you're helping me while I'm helping you. It's like a win-win. So I think that's everything for today. I hope this all makes lots of sense. If it does not, let me know. We can figure out other ways to talk about it. I can write out the instructions for cabling without a cable needle. I can show a different angle. Um, and so don't, don't worry, if you don't get it, it's not your fault. I, I may not have explained it correctly or thoroughly enough or in a way that you understand. There are plenty of different ways people learn things and I want to help you be a better knitter by teaching you a new way to do this. So thank you so much for being here. I hope you had happy holidays if you are celebrating. We'll be celebrating, of course, for the next month or so um, with all the great holidays that are coming up. So thank you so much for being here and happy knitting. Bye. This is season three of The Sweater with Kathleen Dames. Over the course of our 12-week season, we will knit basic cable together. Many thanks to Jen at Spirit Trail Fiberworks, Corinna at Picnic Knits, Tara Swiger and my fellow Starship captains, and you for being part of The Sweater with Kathleen Dames. Don't forget to visit kathleendames.com slash the sweater to sign up for the newsletter. Just not a joiner? Purchase your copy of Basic Cable from my Ravelry shop anytime. Be sure to share your progress on social media with the hashtags Basic Cable and KD Sweater. Questions? Comments? Visit the Kathleen Dames Design Ravelry Forum today. Thanks so much for joining me and happy knitting. <laughs>